Have you been asking yourself, is a new Harley-Davidson motorcycle right for you? The answer to that question is always, yes, it's always time for a new Harley. Sometimes it's time for two or three. Sometimes you need one, two, three, four, five of them, and the motor for a six, and then two that aren't with you. You need, yes, always more Harleys. That's always the answer. Sometimes they're 53 years old and look like this and are probably really in your future, but it's always time for another bike. No, I, I, in all seriousness, I have been inundated by an email recently asking, am I going to buy a new Harley? And do I think you should? No, there's actually been a lot of emails. And I figured I'd just address it here. What are my thoughts? Do you need a new 24 bike? Am I going to get a 24 bike? What does life mean? It's a good question. It really is. I actually have not ridden a 2024 Harley Davidson yet. Shocking. I didn't rate an invitation to the Vegas thing that you saw all this content coming out with. A lot of good stuff where people were flown out to Vegas and they rode them on a track with Kyle Wyman and I don't know. Fat guy didn't get invited. Fat guy never gets invited. Anyway, it is what it is. So, <laughs> so I have not ridden one yet. I've been offered, of course, uh, to take one out for a spin. My local dealer here has said, anytime you want, man, come grab one, take it for a ride. Good friend of mine is a sales manager up at a local dealer here. Good dude. Go check out his channel. Let me say this right now. It's Stogicide. Stogicide. His name's Stogie. S-T-O-G-I-C-I-D-E. Really, really good dude. And he's a sales manager at a Harley dealership. So talk about a little bit of inside knowledge there. He's a good pal. So anyway, do am I going to buy a 2024 Harley Davidson? You know, I don't know. I, 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 I don't think so. We'll get into whether or not I think you should, but I don't think so. Besides space being an issue, I mean, we're about to sell the Cholo to make some room. That money's going to my old man so he can buy a toy and that kind of stuff. But I, I don't think so, right? I, I, the reason why, <laughs> there's one of two bikes I would buy in 2024. Not the new Road Glide. I'm just partial to the new Street Glide. I really think that new Batwing is fantastic. And like I've said before, if you ride in heavy weather, a Batwing is very, very practical. You can get down and get small behind them. And in South Florida, we ride in freaking hurricanes from time to time. So it's a good thing to have. So I really like the regular Street Glide. Has a 117 liquid cooled motor. I did verify with a couple friends that that 117 liquid cooled motor is the same liquid cooled 117 that's been in CVO Ultras and Limiteds for a while. So, for example, sitting on a lot of showroom floors right now, just because they're so beautiful but so expensive, is the 2023 CVO Road Glide Limited. The one that people made fun of and said it has the gold wing paint job. Ha ha ha. I don't think so. I think some bitch is beautiful. But um, so that bike has a 117 cubic inch liquid cooled motor. Just the heads are liquid cooled. Back then, those 117 liquid cooled, the radiators were in the lowers. That's why it was always an ultra or a limited. And that to me specifically is not something I liked. And as a matter of fact, the reason why I got rid of my 131 bike was because it was liquid cooled and it had to have lowers to have a place for the radiator. What Harley has done is taken those radiators that stuck out to the sides and were trapped inside of a lower and reworked the chin spoiler so that where the voltage regulator and stuff is, the radiator's down there. The motor is exactly the same. They just sort of fixed the liquid cooling problem, all right? So that's what that is. I, I, I like the regular 117 Street Glide. I think it's gonna ride really good. I think you put some slip-ons and bars on it and you've got a bike for murdering miles. I think that'd be a great bike. I really, really like the new infotainment. I actually, even though I'm a purist, you know, I'm working on this guy right here. We're building a, a rigid skinny chop and I have a uh, rigid skinny chop sports dirt that I'll be re reunited with in Daytona named Brown Sugar. Like I love traditional bikes. Shovel head is a thing of beauty, all that sort of stuff. But I do love technology on a bike that you're going to ride a lot. If you're going to run to friggin' Jacksonville and back like we used to all the time with the organization I'll be named, even though we're not members anymore, back in those days, Jacksonville and back, Orlando and back, Tampa and back, you know, Fort Myers and back, those just like regular, regular days were 500 miles. Infotainment's nice. GPS is nice. If you murder miles, it's really, really good to have. I like that stuff. I like tech. So I think the new screen is amazing. Uh, the one thing I like about my wife's car, I freaking hate that car. She's got a 22 Audi Q7. Don't like the car. There's too much gadgetry. 
it's too Germanic. You know, there's stuff like that going on with the AC system, but I do love the dash. It's a virtual screen. It's a TFT screen behind the steering wheel. That's the dash. <laughs> I don't know why I say some of the shit I do sometimes. Anyway, it's got like a, a digital gauges, and if you press a button, the gauges become real small, and it's your GPS. Is the entire I love that. Like that is really cool in that car. Everything else, uh, uh not for me. But I do like that. So the new infotainment system, awesome. On the new street glide, the fact that there's a drawer under that screen that your giant honking phone, you know, we got these mega giant phones anymore. They fit in there and it plugs in. That problem's been solved. You couldn't fit a big phone in a street glide fairing before. I know first world 2024 problems. There's someone out there throwing a damn tantrum, whatever. But it is it is cool that you can throw that in that drawer and it fits. That's nice. Um, huge fan of that. For me, it would either be the orange CVO street glide or a basic, probably either shark skin blue or black street glide. But back to the bat wing, no matter what, probably. Not a big fan of the new eyeball on the Rogue Life. Just preference, maybe you love it, anyway. So, do I think you should buy a new Harley? Well, isn't that a financial decision? So I, I'm not even gonna weigh in on that, right? Because just be prepared, what are, we, what are people paying? Comment down below what you've seen, but I'd imagine a brand new Street Glider Rogue Glide, out the door, tax title license, if you buy maintenance, I buy maintenance. Only if it says Harley Davidson on it. I don't buy aftermarket stuff. I only buy Harley plans. Um, so like Harley's extended warranty, I buy that. If you're not gonna modify the bike heavily, slip-ons and bars, fine. But if you're gonna leave the motor alone, I buy an extended warranty. Even if it doesn't get used, I've always looked at it as you paid the money to not worry about it, right? That's just one perspective, especially if you spend all that money and if because you spend all that money, you can't afford a $5,000 repair if you maybe had to do a burnout one night at a, at a at not that it would cover the warranty i'm incriminating myself but if you maybe do a burnout at a campground and blow the transmission well change the tire first don't take it to the dealership and then clean the rubber from the inside of ask me how i know clean the rubber out from inside of the rear fender before you take it in and say i don't know what happened anyway so i do like extended warranties uh prepaid maintenance i like that too if you do the math, if you, if you kill miles, a lot of these prepaid maintenance plans, they're by time, not mileage, right? So you're buying a three year, right? I know from my dealer, Palm Beach Harley and Alligator Alley Harley, at least it was last time I bought a new bike, which has only been a year ago, uh, not even. Um, the, the, the prepaid maintenance was a two year contract, three year contract or deal or they called it, but it didn't matter the mileage. So you bought the plan, all these pool of people, all these people, they buy these prepaid maintenance, maintenance packages and then however many miles you ride in that time, you get the maintenances in that time. So if you buy a brand new bike and in three years put 2000 miles on it, you only get your 1000 mile service out of it and then like one more, not even another oil change. Anyway, but if you ride say, 40,000 miles in those three years, that person's getting all the services paid for. So that freaking works out. The reason why they can do that is again, the person that doesn't ride versus the person that does, it all sort of evens out. So I like prepaid maintenance and I like extended warranties. Now that I've talked about that forever, um, you're probably paying 35 grand out the door, right? For the bike, if you tax title license, if you buy maintenance and warranty, if you go all in like I typically do, probably 35 grand, right? So I'm not gonna even get into that, that's up to you. Interest rates are high. If you're a cash buyer, awesome. Uh, don't take it out of your house. Uh, so, hope I don't have to give people that financial advice, but don't take cheap money. Out of, don't, don't do that. That's just how I feel. It's just my opinion, but don't, don't take money out of your house to buy a motorcycle. Anyway, so do I think you should buy a new bike if you have a 2022? Probably not. You know, like the frame is the same, the motor's basically the same, except liquid, except liquid cool heads. Uh, audio in that new infotainment's awesome, new lighting's awesome, new shape and look is awesome, new wheels are awesome. But is it new bike when your bike's only a couple of years old? No. When I do think you should buy a bike, and I don't mean to offend anybody, I don't mean to hurt feelings, people are precious. If you have a twin cam touring bike, I do think if you're running a Twinkie, it's time. If, if you can swing it, man, if you can swing that nut, that's that's on that's on you. But uh, if you're running, say, a 2016 Road Glide and that sucker's paid off or has equity in it, 
Yeah, I'd probably sell that sucker and buy a new bike because that's a huge quantum leap forward. Um, I've owned a lot of M8 touring bikes because I lost my mind a couple of years ago and was turning and burning through them. But uh, I've owned three, three, at least three twin cam touring bikes. I had a brand new 2014 Street Glide uh, that I bought brand new, traded my crossbones in on it. Can you believe that? I traded a Springer in on a Street Glide. Anyway, so yeah. Bought a 2014 uh, uh, blackened Cayenne Street Glide. Slip-ons and bars. I think that's all I did to it, right? It was just, you know, just rode it a lot. That bike, you know, it was hot. It ran hot. They all run hot. Lots of vibration. Uh, just general stuff. Suspension was not great back then. <laughs> that sort of stuff. Uh, I then also had that 2016 Rogue Glide. Not a fair assessment here, just an asterisk. Because that was a stage five and that bike was a psychopath um tons of heat 110 inch stage five tons of heat tons of vibration did not ride anywhere near as good as these guys as these new milwaukee eight touring bikes nowhere near as good hated riding that bike to be honest so if you have a twin cam bike even the, also we're talking maybe even older stereo so we're talking the pre uh 2019 stereo if you're running that it's a nice upgrade to get that new big giant screen. Or even the one that didn't even have GPS, right? The one just radio. This is only if you like tech, all right? The dude out there who's having a tantrum, this video's not for you, okay? Go go ride your panhead that you don't own, let's be honest, and then <laughs> and have a good old day, right? But if you're running a you know a 14 street glide, older than that, of course, uh, I think it's probably time. You know, the new stereo is awesome, new suspension's awesome, the wheels look great. Uh, a Milwaukee 8 is a life changer. This this liquid cooled head thing is going to stop roasting your nether regions if you're in Sturgis just doing parade duty down Lazelle. It you'll enjoy a new motorcycle, right? So LED lighting, all that sort of stuff. So that's just my opinion. I really do want to know what you think. Someone's going to say I would never trade my 2011, my 1992 Tour Glide. 82 tour glide blah, 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 i would never tr and that's fine if that's if that bike and you have a deep soulful connection then i'm really really glad for you that's awesome but if your bike is a, a an older twinkie uh rushmore or not especially if it's not a rushmore pre-14 um yeah man i think you should go look at a new bike i think they're really really nice i think that they quality's fantastic on them paint is top notch the new infotainment's badass the new suspension's great yeah, I think it's time for a new bike if you're on a Twinkie. That's that's just my opinion. Comment down below what do you think. Call me all the wonderful names that you will. It's great. It's part of being on YouTube. And uh, that's it. Love you all to death. Take care of each other. We'll talk real soon. Bye.